Hi my crafty friends, welcome back to my full deck challenge. This is card number 15. I've made it in the style of a specimen card. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to work out, but I think I t it turned out pretty good. Let me show you how I made it. Before I cut the windows out, I'm going to prepare the background. I'm going to make two cards the same as I'm going to make a back and a front. I also have the two smaller cards which we're going to go in the middle. And when I started the project, I did them in the same method as I did the background cards. And then I realized that I didn't really like it. You'll see why. And then I just went with a plain card for the middle. But let's talk about the background. I start by adding some white tissue paper with some Mod Podge to the background. This will help to adhere any color or any kind of paste that I put to the card. I also add the layer of Mod Podge to the top of the tissue paper. This will seal it. Once the Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to trim off the excess tissue with the scissors. For the corners, to add a little bit of interest and additional texture, I tear off little bits so it leaves a rough edge. And you'll see when I add the ink, it adds some little dimension there just to make it a little bit more interesting. The technique I'm using for adding the colour is my smooshing technique with my acrylic block. I apply the ink, this colour is called tea dye by Tim Holtz, it's an oxide ink. I apply a few drops onto the acrylic block, I spray with water and then I smush the cards onto the wet ink. I'm going to add a few layers and I draw each layer in between and I always start with my lightest colour first. Next I'm adding the colour called Vintage Photo. This is in an ink pad so I just press the ink pad onto the acrylic block. Add some water and move the cards around to pick up the colour. They're already looking really nice and vintagey. I'm going to add some grit paste. I apply it with a small palette knife and I just put it in certain areas. I leave some areas quite thick and I spread it over in some other areas. This makes beautiful texture. It's like a texture paste but it's more gritty and when the color goes over it it absorbs it in a very unique way so it makes it look a bit rusty and very um aged and old if you're using the vintage colors. I really love working with this grit paste. It's a Tim Holtz product. You could also use just regular texture paste if you don't have the grit paste. Once the grit paste is dry, I'm going to add a few more layers of color. I'm now applying the ink directly onto the card, just making some splashes. I'm also using another color ink called brushed corduroy. And then I spray with water on the droplets and I move the card around and let the, the color flow. You can also see that I'm pressing one card into the other just to smush it around a bit. You really can't control the color too much. I do like that though. I like that you're not quite sure what kind of effect you're going to get in the end. Just let the color do its own thing. It's really experimental and really a lot of fun. And I'm going to apply one more layer of colour, the Vintage Photo colour. I'm adding some contrast by using a black watercolour pencil. I dip the point of the pencil in some water 
and then I go around the edge of the card. As I go, I also smudge with my finger to blend it in a little bit. I don't want a definite dark line, I want more of like a shadow. When I finished these smaller cards, I realized that they were probably a little bit too covered. And if they were going to be in the middle of my specimen card, you wouldn't really be able to tell what they were. And they'd be too monotonous as they were the same as the background. So I tried to peel off some of it to show more of the card, but that wasn't working for me. So I decided that I would just use a plain smaller card. I wouldn't cover it with anything and put that as the specimen inside. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I don't really measure much very accurately. I tend to go sort of with the eye and an estimate. So I'm not measuring this too much. I'm just trying to see where the little card will fit. And I'm using the markings on the back of the playing card as my guide. And I'm using a X-Acto knife and a metal ruler. And I'm cutting out my little rectangle that will be the inside of my specimen card. I always say if the little centers that I cut out for other projects, we could use them somewhere else in the future. I'm going to use a cellophane bag for the inside of the specimen card. I'm applying a small piece of double sided tape to the back of my smaller card and then I'm going to stick that to the inside of the cellophane bag. You could also use a plastic sleeve or some acetate or if you have a laminating machine you could laminate it. Whatever you have and whatever is easier. I'm now going to use the thin double sided tape to go all the way around the inside of the card which I will then stick the cellophane onto. I'm using the thinner one because of the size of the edging of the card. My regular size one will be a little too wide and it won't work. I could trim it but I find this a little easier. I'm adding a few strips of the double sided tape to the inside of the cellophane so I can stick the two sides of the cellophane together before I add the back part of the card. I'll be using the same method for that. You'll notice the cellophane is overlapping of the card and that is fine. We will trim that at the end. If we try and get the exact piece now and try and line everything up, it is a little bit slippery and it won't always align properly and it might get a bit frustrating. So I find if the piece is bigger than what you need, um, work with that. It's easier and then you can just trim off the excess once you're done. We could leave this plain as is, I think it looks effective like this too, but I'm going to add a little bit of embellishment just to zhuzh it up a little bit. I have this sticker that is like a label style that I'm going to add and I have that number 24 which is actually from an old 
vintage bingo game that I'm going to stick on there too because I do think it looks quite effective. I have a piece of black thread, just normal regular sewing thread. I just cut a piece and bunch it up and then I'm going to stick the label over the top. Although it's a sticker, I'm using some hot glue just to make sure it sticks down over the thread. I'll just work on the placement of the number 24. I'm not quite sure yet where I want to put it. In the sticker sheet bookie that I have, which is from Tim Holtz, there's also a few different random numbers. So I'm just sticking a little number on there. And then I'm going to find a spot for the vintage number 24. Let me show you a close-up of the beautiful textures and colours of the background. As you can see, the grit paste makes different colours and tones, and I think it looks really rusty and grungy and old. I'm punching a hole so I can add it to the rest of my collection. Because the hole is punched very close to the cellophane and I don't want it to tear, I'm adding an eyelet to secure it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. There's still lots coming for this full deck challenge. I'll see you again soon. Bye.